Talking about podcasts. <laughs> We're talking about itty bitty podcasts. Podcasts. Dude, I don't even know if I'm harmonizing, but I'm Carter. <laughs> I'm Toast. Jordan. Hey, first thing I want us to talk about. So you remember when we used to, when we used to, remember how we used to say it all the time? Uh, no, on a recent episode, <laughs> we had talked about the projections for Disney movies this year. The big projection was that there were going to be six movies this year that would make $1 billion for Disney. Right. I have seen a trailer that makes me think it's going to be seven. There is no way Spider-Man Far From Home does not make a yeah, billion dollars. Yeah, wow. Yeah. There is no true. way. I want to hear from a Marvel Boys. A, have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think? So, okay. before we do that, yep. Thank spoilers. You. Huge in-game spoilers. Well, and that's what Tom Holland said, too. A lot of people made fun of him because they're like, don't you usually do this? Don't you usually spoil it? Yeah. This is irony. So, but the, the trailer like literally starts him, with Tom Holland right? being like, if you haven't seen in game, please don't watch this, which is good because I'm not kidding. <clears throat> the first five seconds of the trailer are like the biggest spoiler for in game. There's a, there's a line that Mysterio says in this trailer that I do want to talk about. Do it. Uh, whenever yeah. he says, I'm from a... I'm from Earth, just not your Earth. Yep. Confirming a multiverse. Yeah. Uh, in the in the Marvel comics, we've talked before on the show about how Marvel launched the ultimate imprint uh, in in the early 2000s as a way of like kind of rebooting their stories in a separate continuity in like modern context. Um, so in the Ultimate Universe, Peter Parker dies protecting his house from the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin has figured out his identity. He's come to kill Aunt May, and Peter dies on his front lawn protecting Aunt May. Wow. Uh, after Peter dies is when Miles Morales becomes Spider-Man. You've seen Miles in Into the Spider-Verse. Right. In the Ultimate Universe, there is no Mysterio. Uh, Mysterio is transported to the Ultimate Universe uh, through the same device that transports our main universe, Peter Parker, there, which is where he first meets Miles Morales. So I'm wondering if this might be a backdoor introduction to a live-action Miles Morales. How? Well, we already know Miles exists in the current universe. Though. In the current universe, yeah, because because uh, Donald Glover plays his uncle, mm -hmm. Aaron Davis. That's right. Yeah, I just I, thought it was. I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I love the, so the cool. multiverse stuff, and and yeah, the first time that Carol that Danvers out. is referred to as Captain Marvel in any of these movies, right? Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't catch that. And J my my boy Jake, ooh, my boy. Yeah, Jake. we Man, love him. We'll talk about good. him tomorrow. We're gonna talk a lot Big about him tomorrow. Big Gyllenhaal fan. I'm a Gyllenhaal head for sure. About him tomorrow. You know what rhymes with Gyllenhaal? Tell me. Let's play. A star was born. That does. That rhyme. does rhyme. Turning 33 today. Yeah, I just had a feeling. You know, I had a feeling that I was gonna look up today's date and it was gonna blow me away. You know what happened? Nope. It didn't. Well. You really picked up on that. Oh. Uh, there was only one person born today. Only okay. one that's worth anything. I thought we were already in the clue. And so I was like, yeah, no, we're not. Really so sorry. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah. And then two for tomorrow. But the one for today. 33 years old today. With skin like diamonds and hair that would make the Dark Lord most jealous. This actor appears to be working hard to ensure he's known for more than elephant water and deer blood. Who turned 33 today? Robert, Robert Pattinson. Pattinson. Only 33. Robert Pattinson is 33 years oh, old. Wow. Yep. Uh, Diamond Skin and Deer Blood, mm -hmm. Twilight References, Dark Lord. He was Cedric Diggory. Sure, elephant sure. Water was a good one. Elephant That's Water is reference. Water for Elephants. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turning 50 today. Happy 50th to our friend of the podcast and sister of the gods. This actress is truly otherworldly. In 2008, she was nominated for both Best Supporting Actress and Best Actress at the same Oscar ceremony, though she did lose them both. Who turned 50 today? Or tomorrow? Kate Blanchett. Mm -hmm. This is true, Kate Blanchett. Okay. What got you? How did you pick it, pick it up? Sister of the gods. Sister of the gods. Yeah, I got otherworldly. Yep. Nice. Very, very good. I think you described her as such. Multiple mm -hmm. times in Do You Believe in Magic? Yeah, she's wonderful. Yes. Uh, 75 years old tomorrow. Whoa. That's old. As many iconic films as any of them, and as many Oscars as Doge. This director-producer <laughs> hasn't yet been given some thoughtful time on two chunks, but that will all change very, very soon. 
as many iconic films as any of them and as many Oscars as Doge, this director-producer huh. hasn't yet been given some thoughtful time on two chunks, but that will all change very, very soon. 75 years old tomorrow. The very, very might be throwing y'all off. Mm -mm. Okay, that's fine. George Lucas. Yes. <sighs> wow. Shot yeah. from the hip, got it in one. <laughs> wow. Lucas. Yep, very good. That was Star Was Born. And it was back. Thank you, May, mm, for giving you, us May. these May. lovely, lovely what stars. What month was it nine months ago? That's the month we need to thank. <laughs> yeah, because oh. the stars were Thanks, born. Thanks, August. Thanks, August. The, August, you crazy. The Wii Sports List of Months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to introduce a new bit. And part of it is played off the fact of it was just making me too angry to try and find Cranky Critics. Cranky Critic was like one of the very first oh, yeah. bits yeah, we Mr. tried Brody. on Mini Mondays, which, by the way, he shows up again. Really? On Lots of really good movies. Oh, man. But what I wanted to do, and I, we don't have a name for it yet. So either you guys, with your creativity and your juices, are going to name it today. Mm. I good, good thing I brought my juice. Yeah. Or maybe one of the maybe one of the chunkies out there who's listening. At the end of this, we hadn't named it, and they're going to give a shout out, and it'll be named, and it'll be their fault, which is great. So what I want to do is I want you to guess the movie based off of. And this is through the surrogate of Rotten Tomatoes, based off of Rotten reviews. These are certified fresh movies, but I'm going to give you the rotten review, and you have to guess review the movie. The... No, I don't, I think, don't think that's, that's anything. It. Sorry, I was just. I should. Yeah, we might not. We, we don't want to focus too much on naming it. <laughs> that's all I can think of now. Okay, so uh, some of these have a few bad reviews, and and some of them just have one. But you're going to try and guess the plot. Yeah. Okay. 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 You can easily duck out during the middle hour, do some shopping, and slip back into your seat for the climax. You won't have missed a thing. Okay, there's a couple of these for this one. We won't talk about the techno babble inelegantly cited in a bid to hold it all together. The equivalent of taking out an airplane's jack screws and replacing them with chewing gum. Jeez. Yikes. And so because I recognize that some of these, it's really hard to find a bad review that just blatantly talks about the plot. Yeah. But if it comes to this, to where it's just a little bit too hard and a little bit Is out it there. Inception? It's not Inception. But I think you're in the right. I think you're headed the right way. Okay. What I'm actually going to do now is is uh, edit out the name of the movie or any blatant references. Okay. Uh, and just read you the consensus. So on Rotten Tomatoes, there's a consensus. Yeah. Especially if it's certified fresh. Okay. So here's our consensus rating of the critic reviews, and let's see if you can get it now. Exciting, entertaining, and emotionally impactful. Blank does whatever it takes to deliver a satisfying finale to Blank's epic saga. Is this Endgame? Endgame. Is this, what on earth? Dude, that's wild. The middle hour? Go shopping? You can, you can easily duck out during the middle hour, do some shopping, and slip <laughs> back into your seat for the climax. You won't have missed a thing. Jeez. Our next movie. Between traumas, the movie serves up soothingly banal musical numbers Composed by blank and blank and silly, rambunctious comedy. Between Traumas, the movie serves up... Is it Lion King? Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> Good guess. Was that voice crack on purpose? Yep. The movie Very serves much. up soothingly sure. banal musical numbers composed by Elton John and Tim Rice and silly, rambunctious comedy. Wow. I've got a, I've got three for the next one because this was takes. this was pretty fun. So the least humane, least responsible, least pardonable movie I have ever ever seen next review a blast <laughs> that's the end a blast of holly kong whatever that means can you tell does anybody know what that means nope a blast hong kong maybe a blast probably it's all king kong Just a blast <laughs> of holly kong glitz that never approaches the stylistic cohesiveness of say john woo's face off or the charisma of that film's propulsive star john travolta oh what man i'll give you one more for this one it's astonishing that so much money, talent, technical expertise, and visual imagination can be put into the service of something so stupid. What was this awful movie that came out? It's the Matrix? It's The Matrix. How oh did you gosh. just pull The Matrix out of He's nowhere? Good. I actually had a conversation about The Matrix earlier today, and so it's fresh on my brain. He is good at this game. That's okay. weird. Here's my last one. Okay. And I'm going to give you even the actor's name in here. So maybe make it a little easier. I don't see how any gifted actor 
could have done less than Brando does here. His resident power, his sheer innate force, has rarely seemed weaker. Is it the Godfather? The Godfather. <laughs> You're kidding me. 98%. Okay. Both critics and just normal viewers. So weird. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Those people are out there. I mean, I'm all for a spicy take occasionally, um, but when it's essentially either saying nothing or saying something that feels so left field and wrong, it's yeah. hard to take seriously. Yeah, for, real. for sure. And yeah, and that's tough too. And I'm glad that this is kind of transitioning us into a conversation I'd love to have with the three of you. So yeah. part There's of two how, of us. The three of us. Uh, <laughs> the two of you. The two of... Uh, bye, Adam. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> this podcast was kind of... It was definitely inspired by, maybe built by the just the fact that the three of us, but the two of you and David, enjoyed conversations about movies, correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so, as we can see with announcement, like Avengers Endgame is now number two in the world at over $2 billion, very likely to pass Endgame, or very likely to pass itself because of the time loop. Mm. Uh, <laughs> very likely to pass Avatar. Okay? Yeah, wow. Um, but... With how big and how well the cinema continues to do with the snowball effect, people are having these conversations all the time. We've heard about it with Game of Thrones, especially, and with Avengers like that. How do you guys handle when you hear an opinion about a movie? Or what do you think? I'm going to ask two questions. How do you handle it in those conversations? And then, really, honestly, what should your approach be? So I actually had one of these conversations today. You're kidding. Okay. Uh, I have just somebody uh, like yeah, with so, an <clears throat> opinion completely different than yours. Yeah. Um, it was in a, a staff meeting at work. One of our um, bosses was um, talking about the movie Braveheart <laughs> and was like using it as an example for something awesome happening. You know, he's talking about the freedom moment and all that stuff. And yeah. it was like, yeah, yeah, no, that's so awesome. He was like, by the way, Braveheart, which of course, I mean, greatest movie of all time. And then kept <laughs> moving. And sure. I, from the back, without thinking, was just like, okay. And then it stopped. And everybody Ooh. turned to me and I was like, oh, no. I know. And so we had a conversation afterwards where uh, <laughs> I was where you got fired. Where, yeah, where, <laughs> where I was informed that uh, there's no way that Russell Crowe was better than Mel Gibson. And um, that there's no way Gladiator was better than Braveheart. Because that was my example was Gladiator is not even my favorite movie of all time. And it beats the mess out of Braveheart to me. Right. Um, And so I would say that's how I did handle it, (laughs) unfortunately. And the way that I should have handled it was to not do anything. Right. Because my opinion does not matter at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough because a lot of times (laughs) we say love what you love. But in the heat of the moment when you're so passionate about something. And it's funny because it's such a welcome way to communicate in the sports world. Yeah, but somehow really, yeah. the movie world's more offensive. Have you ever noticed that? I that think it's because movies engage us emotionally and that's yeah. inherently more vulnerable to say, this movie engaged me emotionally. And then if I go, are you kidding me? That movie sucks. Yeah. Well, and then I invalidate your emotional response to something. Yeah. You can't say, like, when when you say, like, my team beat your team, that's, that's a fact. And so, like, you can't say, like, my movie is better than your movie because yeah. people can go, well, I like it better. I sure do true. I sure do say that a lot, though. <laughs> yeah. you know, not to turn this into confession time, but I, I super respond negatively when people like a movie that sucks. But you know what? Yeah. I had a cool cool moment today, too, that led to a lot of movie conversations in our staff meeting. Okay. And I had a conversation with a coworker of mine who's um, a little bit older than I am. Maybe, I, I think he's closing in on 40. Oh, okay. Um, so not too much, but he, he, he used to be a police officer and he's, he's a real man's man. So we, we, we love hanging out and he's a great dude, but we don't have a ton in common, but we ended up talking for a long time about the movie, the game, David Fincher's movie with Michael Douglas. Oh yeah. And like kind of bonding over like, isn't it weird that we both like this kind of semi as obscure yep. as Fincher can get, but like kind of obscure movie. And so that you was know, cool. Fincher was almost going to be the director that I brought to our series. But Me too. By Jove, it is so dark. Yeah. And yeah. again, the movie we're about to talk about tomorrow, it's Pretty not dark. like it's too far off, sure. but yeah. it was just hard to pick something, you know, because you wanted to get movies like Seven and stuff like right, that. Right, sure. But um, excellent. I just wanted to like have, because I think... Make me feel bad about the way I talk no, about movies. No, I just think it's a good conversation to have because that's the culture <laughs> that we're in. And especially if we're trying to get more people to talk about movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to say first, hey, we've done it wrong and yep. continue to do so. But sure, here's yes. probably the best way to communicate Here's what that. I'll say. Love what you love, but don't let other people love what they love because <laughs> your taste is better than theirs. Yikes. Excellent. We've totally changed our mission statement, yep. but that's great. Um, <laughs> Two my, chunks and some punks. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice, dude. 
Uh, the final announcement is, or I'm going to ask you guys a question. Did you see Disney's like 10 year plan or like eight year plan that they have? No. no. They've got their movie. Well, it's just a five year plan, but they've got their movie release <laughs> schedule. No, it's actually six or eight years. I just it's wanted to tomorrow. hit all the numbers. It's just, it's just six months. It's the <laughs> very near and far away future of Disney, but the confirmed releases that Disney has coming out. No. So outside of a lot of unnamed Marvel stuff. So confirmation that the next phase is just as many yeah. movies. Uh, there's also a lot of not specifically named uh, live action stuff. But they okay. huh. live action Disney. But they are getting us all the way to, and a lot of Star Wars stuff. But I saw on the last date in there, Avatar 5. Good grief. First of all, that means they own Avatar. I think they got that in, in when they bought Fox. In Yikes. the Fox deal. Okay. Yeah. But there's going to be four Avatar movies. I'm going to go ahead and say it's too many Avatar movies. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and say this: the sequel will be too hey, many Avatar unpopular movies. Unpopular opinion. No, no, no. I'm fine with sequel. I loved with, Avatar. I loved Avatar. For a while, it was my favorite movie of all time. I loved it for what it was, I think. I think I loved it an appropriate amount for my taste. Avatar yeah. feels like that thing that you'd see at E3 that's like an unbelievable tech demo, but that doesn't have a lot of rewatchability. When that's I good. think of Avatar, I think of like, hey, can we make a movie so people will buy Blu-ray players, please? Yeah, that's fair. And 3D. 3D, 3D Blu-ray yeah. players. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Big 3D experience. Yep. Um, okay, to end this episode, we've been listening to some bad... Two bat- Oh. We've been listening to some bad takes, mm. and we've been talking about how uh, we get offended by bad takes. <gasps> Guys, I have an I idea. That bit is called. That bit's called Rotel. You know why? Why? Because it's spicy takes from Rotten Tomatoes. Oh dang! Yep. Oh no! Yeah, Those you did it. Spicy tomatoes. Anyway, <laughs> you did it. Dang. No, it's called Rotel. Sorry, chunkies. <laughs> Even if you have a better idea, it's gone. But if you send something better than Rotel, please, we'll use it because we'll Rotel's try. pretty bad. No, Ro- Rotel it. it on the mountain. No, I'm out. Uh, <laughs> Rotel it on the podcast. <laughs> Rotel your tires. Roll! Let's end this episode yeah. with actually what we would consider ourselves a hot take. We've never had a discussion like this, the three of us, that Ooh. I know of. What is a movie that a lot of people love, but you would have been that rotten review? Okay. Not as mean, right? right. We just sure, talked sure, about sure. we don't want to bash what people love. Okay? So, let's share that. Okay. I'm Carter, and I don't like any installment of the Back to the Future franchise. Whoa. Wow. This is hard. This is hard because I want to talk about it. That is spicy. I'm Doge, and in my opinion, the notebook is trash. (laughs) That's not that spicy. Well, not spicy on our podcast. Ask any mom in the world. That's fair. (laughs) I'm Jordan, and I don't really think Anchorman is that funny or good. It's so hard to like. There's so I much talk about all of this. There's so much awkwardness in the room because this is the first time we've done this. Uh, I feel very exposed. <laughs> uh, uh, bye, bye, everybody. Bye. See ya.